A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. days of the western United States, a man's life often depended on the quickness of his draw, and even when the danger from outlaws and Indians had passed, gun law still ruled the range. There were many feuds in the frontier country. Whole counties took sides, and the quarrels were handed down from generation to generation. It was the masked rider of the plains who finally brought peace to the new territory. Without the force of his great strength and courage, the range wars might never have ended. The ranchers might never have realized that only through cooperation could the winning of the West be accomplished. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! For heaven, for Clay City! Come, oh, Silver! Come on! It was Saturday night and payday on the range. Clay City, the county seat of Clayton County, was thronged with cowboys eager to spend their wages. The Longhorn Cafe was doing a thriving business, and the bar was three deep with customers. Few noticed the tall, broad-shouldered figure that stood looking on, and those who did never guessed that he was a famous lone ranger in disguise. Suddenly, a man near the door shouted. Hi, hi, fellas. Sam Healy's waiting up outside with all his waddies. Uh, Chance, that means trouble. If there is, it's because Sam starts it. That ain't so. It's the Parsons that are to blame. I'll fight the man that says so. Now, no shooting, Chance. No shooting. Don't wreck my place. I won't stand for it. Here they come. The polecats ought to stay where they belong. Who's a polecat? The Healy's are. It's the Parsons that ain't no good. Chance, Chance, please. No fight. The Healy's ought to be chased out of the county. The Parsons are just dirty rustlers. Who said that? Take that, Blast. Oh. Pitch in, fellas. Give it to the Healy's. Come on! Everybody for the Parsons, lend a hand! Oh! Oh, my bar! There goes that mirror! Please, Kent, please! Oh, God! Oh, I'll no, get no. you! Put please. down that gun! Don't. I'll lay on the floor! Hey! Oh, wow, mister, you sure pegged him! Come on, let's get out of here. They all seem to be ganging up on you. Lead the way, friend. One side, out of our way! Do that, get back! One side there! <laughs> Thanks a million, stranger. Them wild cats would like to tear my head off. You're Mark Healy, aren't you? Yeah. We ever met before? I don't recollect it. No, we've never met. Well, I'd like to stay in Palaver for a while, but I got places to go. Adios. <laughs> Adios, friend, and thanks again. Get up. Get along there. Get up. Hello. Uh, here. Get the horses ready. Them in shade. There. Good. Come along. Well, the stories we heard certainly weren't exaggerated. You, you look. Yes? Some fella. Follow other fella. 
The following young chap I just spoke to, Mark oh. Healy. Probably just happened to be leaving town in the same direction. Hello there, old fellow. Hello, still fight. You here? They say every time the Parsons and the Healy's meet, there's always a brawl. Not right. Now just about everybody in the county has chosen sides. Yep. Well, I think before we leave Clay City, we can do something about that. We we do plenty. Let's go. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Come on, old fellow. Young Mark Healy spurred his horse out of town. Cut away from the trail after a mile or two, then finally brought his horse to a halt where the ledge of a cliff looked down upon the moonlit valley below. And... Oh, oh, oh. Ann? Ann? Is that you, Mark? Ann. Mark, your, your shirt. Why, it's almost been torn off you. <laughs> I reckon I don't have to tell you how come. Another fight. Yep. The regular Saturday night jamboree. Here, sit down here, honey. Oh, Mark, isn't this fighting ever going to end? It's been going on for a long time. Too long. The Healy's again the Parsons. <laughs> I reckon you and me are the only ones from the two families that didn't fight at the drop of a hat. And we've got to sneak away so we can see each other. You a Parson, me a Healy. Gosh, wouldn't they be talking to county if they were to know we was keeping company? It'll be found out someday. It, it, it's bound to be. Shucks, who cares? I care. Oh, Anne, a little No, fight. Mark, it, it'd be terrible. I don't mean for us so much, though that'd be bad enough, but, but I mean for our fathers. They're so proud, and, and it would hurt them so if they knew about us. <laughs> They're funny old gents, aren't they? Funny and, and awful nice. You know, Anne... When I was a youngster, I used to just despise you. <laughs> Did you? I used to think you were the meanest little boy I'd ever seen. <laughs> Once every week, Pa'd get the whole family together and remind us again what skunks and polecats a Parson tribe was. Shucks, when I was a youngster, I never had no more idea of doubting that than, than well, in a day all his followed night. And Dad, all you had to do was just say the name Healy and... And Mother and I had to stop our ears. My such language. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been thinking things over. Yes. I've been saving. I got cash, and I don't need to stay on the ranch no longer. I could strike out for myself. Oh. That is, uh, if you'd be willing to get hitched. We will someday. Why not now? To blaze with our families fighting like cats and dogs. To blaze is what they'd think of us. We get a right to live our own lives, ain't we? No. But, Anne... No, Mark. No matter what we think, it always gets back to the same thing. I love my father and you love yours. We couldn't do that to them. Oh, I wish... Wish what, Mark? Well, I wish I knew which side was in the right. Maybe then it could be cleared up. Pa claims when he was a young fella, partners with your pa, your pa stole from him. Then try to knife him so as he wouldn't be found out. And my father claims the same. Well, there you are. And as long as we live, we'll probably never learn the truth. <sighs> well, I... Oh, now, you're not going home already, are you? I have to. But gosh, I haven't been with you ten seconds. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. Well, I haven't. I have to go, Mark. If I'm gone from the house too long, they'll ask for me. Then they'll wonder where I've been. And, and if we're ever discovered... It... What's that? Oh. Wait. A horseman. Oh, Mark, do you think we were seen? No, I reckon not. But I... Now, don't you worry about it. No, I must go home. I simply must. Goodbye, Mark. Goodbye. Don't you forget, Anne. Tomorrow at the same time. who had been heard by the young couple, rode straight and fast to the Healy Ranch House, a large rambling structure that spoke of its owner's wealth. There he dismounted and hurried up the steps of the porch. Boss! Confound it, Slim. Ain't I never gonna break you a busting in the house like that? Why, I ought to... Now, wait, boss. I got news. I ain't interested in news. 
I just got back from that fracas in town, and all I hanker for is some peace. Well, this news will interest you. Huh. It's about your boy, about Mark. <laughs> Lick a dozen of them parsons again, huh? <laughs> There's a boy for you. He can lick That ain't it. You're just about as dead wrong as you could be. Yeah? He left town right after the fight started tonight, and I followed him. Followed him? Followed my boy? Why, you sneaking spy and no, little... Don't, don't you talk to me like that, boss. I, I'll be telling others about what I've seen. I don't listen to sneaks. <laughs> then I don't suppose you care to know that he slipped out of town to meet old Eric's girl, Ann Parsons. <laughs> no, I don't reckon what? you'd... It's all right. Do you hear me? My boy wouldn't have no truck with the Parsons. You, you out. I ought to whip you within an inch of your life for a thing like that. Uh, it's true. Oh, you? Uh, all right. If you don't believe me, I, uh, I'll bet that's him now. Ask him. Just ask him. I will. You'll see. I'll ask Mark, and then I'll apologize to him for ever letting you tell a lion story like that. And after that, he's knocking the living daylights out of you. All right. There he is. Evening, Paul. Howdy, Slim. Son? Yeah? I just heard something about you. Before I ask you about it, I want you to know I don't believe a word of it. You're my son, and you wouldn't turn again me. Of course I wouldn't, Paul. What'd you hear? It's something Slim claims he saw. Yeah? Uh, I hate to even mention it. You're afraid to ask. Go on, Paul. I'll tell you the truth, whatever it is. Slim says he followed you out of town tonight. He did? He says he followed you and seen you meet that Parsons girl. Now tell him to his face what a sneaking pole cat he is, and then give him what for her. Well, go on, son. Tell him. Hmm. Did he look to you like he was going to say I was lying? Mark, say something. You, you don't mean... Paul, he didn't lie. Mark. <laughs> don't look at me like that. you got to listen to me. She's fine. She's the finest woman I ever met. It don't matter what her paw is or anything else. She's the... Get out. Now, look, Pa, just... Get out! I won't. You gotta savvy how I feel. You gotta listen to me. You gotta savvy it ain't fair to blame Eric's girl for what he may be done. Oh. Wait. You hit me. No, maybe you understand me. I said get out. Don't come back. But, Pa... You're my son, and you side in with the folks that had run me off the range if they had the chance. I... I ain't got words enough to tell you what I think of you. Why, even folks that ain't no kin, even townspeople and nesters and cowhands in the county are more loyal to me than what you've been. People that don't owe me nothing siding with me. While you that owes me everything, turn again me. I haven't. You shouldn't say that. From now on, you're a parsons. When I meet you on the trail, I'll shoot at you just like I would any other parsons. You ain't no Healy. You don't deserve the name. Now, look here, Paul. You can't... Mark, Mask. What the... this isn't a hold-up. I've come for you, Mark. Come before there are things said neither one of you will ever be able to forget. I might as well. I don't know who you are, stranger. You're masked and you're likely a crook. But I'll be blasted if I wouldn't rather go with a crook than stay here. It's the kind of company you deserve. I'll come back when you apologize. But when I do come back, if ever, Anne is going to be my wife. Then you won't come back. Come on, Mark. Yeah. See, boss, I, I was telling you the straight truth all the time. You, you see that it was, don't you? Uh, you were. Uh, I thought you ought to know. I beg your pardon for calling you a pool cat, Slim. Oh, I don't bear no hard feelings. You have my apology. Oh, now but... clear out. What? Get off my place. Clear out. Ride so far I don't ever hear of you again. My boss. You hear me? Or do I have to take a gun for you? I'm going. I'm going. You fool. You fool. <laughs> what did you have to tell me for? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger led Mark Healy to the small, well-hidden camp he shared with Tonto. And... Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, oh. Here we are, Mark. Yeah. Tonto. Uh-huh. This is Mark Healy. You saw him earlier tonight. Howdy, Tonto. Uh-huh. Tonto member you. You'd better saddle up, Tonto, and get on your way. Me already saddled. Good. How soon do you think you can be back? Me be back more night. Early or late? Uh, me not be late. And get on your way and hurry. Uh, here, Scout. Where's Tonto going? Mark, your father and Eric Parsons have been enemies ever since they broke up their partnership years ago. And they'll hate each other till they die from the way it looks. Not if Tonto's successful. Huh? Successful? Uh, me be back tomorrow. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. I don't see what you... Have you ever had a quarrel with anyone, Mark? I don't mean the quarrel you had tonight or the quarrel with the Parsons, but a quarrel in the ordinary course of your life. <laughs> yeah, more than I could put a name to. Did you ever stop to analyze them afterwards? Stop to remember just what started those quarrels? Uh-huh. <laughs> You're laughing? <laughs> well, I shouldn't after all that's happened, but when you mentioned that about how some of my fights got started, I just couldn't help myself. No? You see, a heap of them fights started from things so small it'd surprise you. But you never admitted that the cause didn't amount to much. Mm, no. No, I reckon I never. But what... That's is... just the point I wish to make. It's been years since your father and Eric quarreled. During that time, the original cause has been magnified a dozen times. Well, golly, from what I've been told, they had reason enough to fight. Just as you always told your friends that you had good reason for your fights. Say, I never quite thought of that before. The story is that either Eric or your father stole from the other in their partnership days. Uh Uh-huh. That the guilty partner tried to murder the other. Although it's never been determined just which one was the guilty party. You've got something in mind. Tato happened to know the real cause of their quarrel. You mean the story I've always heard is not true? Not in the slightest. Oh, well, what? Tonto will bring proof of the actual cause. Your father and Eric are brave men. They faced guns many times in their lives. I just wish I had their gumption. There's one thing I'm sure they fear. There is. I've never heard of it. Ridicule. Well, I don't get you. I think that rather than be laughed at from one end of the county to the other, they'd be willing to bury their feud. Gosh, what did start them fighting? You'll learn tomorrow. And then we'll have work to do. Slim did not hesitate to spread the story about Mark and Ann. In the course of time, it reached the ears of old Eric Parsons himself. And on the evening of the following day, he called his daughter before him, then... You wanted me, Father? I've been hearing things, Ann. I, I think I know what you mean. Well... Well? I I suppose you heard Mark Healy and I were seen together. I did. It's true. You didn't mean to meet him, though, eh? You just happened to bump into him and he wouldn't let you get away. That's it, ain't it? No. What? We we met on purpose. You met the son of the man that once tried to kill me? He was friendly with a skunk like that? I, I love Mark, Father. Fiddlesticks. I do love him. You're just a child. You ain't got the sense to know what you feel. I'm 21. I've seen folks that was half-witted children till the age of 60. You're likely the same. In love with a Healy. Why, why, that's the blamedest nonsense I ever heard. It isn't. I'm your pa. But I... And as long as you're in my care, living in my home, it's my duty to look after you. You ain't leaving this house till you admit you've got over that local notion. I won't. I never will. Get to your room. I, I love Mark. I don't care what you say. I love him. Get to your room. <laughs> you... You can keep me here the rest of my life, and, and I'll still feel just like I do now. You say that, or I say you can come out. <laughs> Mark. Oh, Mark. Anne, what have you been doing to you? Father found out. Yeah, and so did mine. And you should have seen the fur fly. Oh, Mark, what do we do? Oh, don't you worry, none. But I... You listen to me. Everything's going to be all right. I don't see how. I do. And if I don't miss my guess, this fighting between your family and mine is just about ready to bite the dust. I... I don't understand. Look, Ann, do you think you could do something if I asked you to? Anything I can. You know the back room in old Crimmins General Store? The place where they sometimes hold meetings when there's just a few getting together? Of course. You figure you could have your paw there by, say, 7 o'clock tomorrow night? I I could try. You do more than that, Ann. You have him there if you've got to do it at the point of a gun. But why? You'll see when the time comes. Now, that's a promise? Yes, Mark. And good night, Ann. And you get him there. (laughs) 
It was at six o'clock the next evening that old Sam Healy, sitting alone in his living room, happened to glance out the front window. What he saw made him jump angrily to his feet and stomp to the door. My horse. My own horse. The nerve of them horse thieves. Walking right into my corral and walking out again with my personal horse. I'll teach the critters. Hey, where do you think you... You. Come on, Pa. Your horse is all saddled and waiting for you. You... You blasted whippersnapper, you... Need you sputter like that. You're riding, and that's all there is to it. Take your hands away from that bridle of horse you get. Don't grow. And you're here again, too. Well, clear out. You're coming with us. I ain't. I ain't no such a thing. Oh, I... don't be so doggone cantankerous. Dog blast my hide. I'll fix you, fellas. You might as well come willingly, Sam. If not, you'll go anyhow. Just wait till I... Do. I warned you. Hey, let me go. Let me down. Let me down, I tell you. There's no use resisting. Blasted crook. Let go. <laughs> let me down. That's what you get for acting like a baby, Pa. You get to carry just like one. Now, into the saddle with you. Are you taking him on your horse, stranger? Yep. Silver can handle the two of us. What is this? I'll have a law on you both. It's the same as kidnapping. It ain't right. It ain't legal. Pa, it's sure going to end a heap of trouble. Ready, stranger? Let's go. Get up, now. Get up. Come on, Silver. Let me down, I tell you. Let me down. The Lone Ranger, with Sam Healy across the saddle, led the way to Crimmins' general store, a bare frame structure at the edge of Clay City. It was dark when they arrived, and the masked man reined up in the shadows behind the store. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, 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 boy. You fellas will pay for this. I'll show you. You can't do this to me and get away All with All right. Me. Come along with you. Come on, Paul. What did you bring me here for? <laughs> Wouldn't you just like to know? If you're mad now... I am. Well, it ain't going to be a patch on what you soon will be. This way, Pa. We're going in the back way. You wouldn't do this if I was 20 years younger. By golly, I'd show you. Get in here, Pa. And if it wasn't two again, my one, I'd still teach a thing or two. I... Hey! Sam! So this is why I was brought here. I thought the story Ann gave him was kind of fishy. Not any fishier than you, you sight. Why, are you... Oh, stop it. Stop it this minute. Why didn't I bring my gun along? Because you're too old and stove in to use one. I am, am I? Well, I'll That'll show you. That'll be enough. Quiet, both of you. But he... Quiet. <laughs> Don't they beat all, stranger? Been fighting for 40 years. Got the whole county choosing up sides between them. And when you get right down to it, they sound just like a couple of kids, daring each other to take a punch at them. And... How'd you get your boy here? Honest, Mark, I don't know. All I know is I don't want another chore like this as long as I live. Say now, you two... You listen to me. Uh, who are you? That doesn't matter. What does matter is the fact you and Eric there have been enemies all these years for what amounted to absolutely nothing. Nothing I like that. Before you leave this room, you're going to shake hands, give Ann and Mark permission to marry, and promise publicly that you've both been wrong. That's the craziest speech I ever heard one man say. Them things are just as likely to happen as... As Eric is likely to dodge hanging. Why, you... One moment. Sam, you still claim Eric tried to kill you when you were partners? And that ain't the half of it. You look here, you... You get your turn to speak, Eric. I understand you accuse Sam of the same things he accuses you. Only I'm telling the truth and he ain't. I am. You wouldn't know the truth if it stepped up and smacked you in the eye. Please. One moment. You both told your stories. Now I'll tell mine. I'll get it over with quick so I can put my attention to lamb based on this pole cat. Why, you skinny flea-bitten old mule, you couldn't lick a postage, Sam. Quiet. Quiet. Do you recall a pretty young dancer from south of the border? A dancer named Rosita? Huh? Rosita? What did we have to do with dancers? You knew this girl while you were both young men. Ah, yeah. Yeah, now that I come to think of it, I do recall a girl like that. <laughs> Mighty sweet on me she was, too. Sweet <laughs> on you? <laughs> Why, when I used to go in the cafe, she never looked at nobody else but me. Used to sing just a special for me, too. Bragging again. Wait right there. Where are you going? You'll see. Bring her in here, Tando. Ah. Uh. Oh, amigos! Oh, how long it is been since last we met. Yeah, what's this? <laughs> this ain't Rosita's grandma, is she? Pig, scum, I am Rosita. What? Oh, you can't be. You say I do not speak the truth? But, but I can remember Rosita just like it was yesterday. Why... Why, she didn't hardly weigh a hundred pounds. And she never had no mustache, neither. No. And then you did not insult me. You say to me many fine speeches. Oh. <laughs> you remember when you called me the beautiful flower of the border, no? Who, me? Si, senor. That and many other things. Why, I never, I never did. That's enough. 
I thought to bring you here to remind them of the real cause of their quarrel. You remember it, don't you? Oh, but yes, senor, with the mask. They're in the cantina. I'm dancing, la la. I carry the rose in my hand. I throw it to them. Senor Healy says it is for him. Senor Parsons says, oh, so loudly, it is for him. And then they fight. <laughs> and in one more week, they are the great enemies. <laughs> now look, Rosita, you, you must have got things mixed up. Uh, it couldn't have been that way. Rosita, do not lie, senor. <laughs> <laughs> Recollect what you told me, stranger. What you told me about how quarrels start and then get more serious all the time. Well, I'll be switched if you didn't hit it right. Sandow had heard the story south of the border and recalled it when we learned of this feud. Uh, uh, Rosita. See? Uh, if, uh, if you won't go to talking, why, why maybe I could scrape up a few pesos to... Then you heard my conditions. Either you agree to them or the entire story will be repeated throughout the county. But we'd never live it down. Honest, I'd plumb forgot that's how the whole thing started. Well, I, uh... I don't know. I suppose... It doesn't uh, seem like we got much choice. I don't like you particularly. And I ain't got much use for you. But if we have to, why, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we might as well shake hands. And Mark and me, Father, you... You're They've got it. to let us get hitched now. <laughs> it's blackmail, but I don't mind so much. <laughs> get hitched whenever you're a minor. <laughs> oh, this makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got nothing on me, Rosita. But plenty on our father. <laughs> hey, friends. We may meet again, Mark. Come, Santa. Uh, Hold on. Come back here, stranger. I'll well, the uh, mask man's gone, honey. But while he was here, he sure done a plenty. <laughs> <laughs> just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Thank <laughs> you.